Good evening. Morning and afternoon, global population. Well, got three things today. First being some bad news. I've been sitting on for a bit, but I think it's about time I came out of it. Uh, second part, second bit is some good news. It's always good. And uh, an apology as well. Alright. the apology out of the way. I was supposed to be doing a live stream last week, uh, last Friday at midnight and unfortunately due to technical difficulties which always happen, apparently we zoom anyway, <laughs> uh, we didn't actually stream, we did record a three hour show though. Um, I went to uploading that I haven't got a clue uh, but they will be sending me a copy at some point with any luck. Hopefully they'll be cutting out all the uh, bits of falling into bits of laughter and <laughs> inappropriate jokes, you know, and stuff like that. But, but yeah, so sorry about that, guys. But I mean, I stream it myself, but I'm actually restricted from streaming, believe it or not. So anyway, so yeah, uh, I'll leave a link to the channel in the description. Like I said. At some point, it'll, uh, it'll probably turn up on the on the channel. Right, Let's see apology out of the way. I'll get to the bad news. Um, it's to do with the situation in Canada, which has, uh, I think, uh, shall we say, escalated as it were basically the government aren't listening to their own people uh, to their own ministers in many cases um, they're already ramming in measures for internment camps for the, uh, the unwell and for those that won't take the vaccine obviously um, that's what this is about here stuff but like I said this is happening everywhere it's just that thankfully someone within the Canadian government has seen fit to, to tell people and I commend them for that I really do even though they're anonymous they're, uh, they're gonna go down as an anonymous hero it's a nightmare situation but like, like I've already said it's going on everywhere New Zealand have had them for a while. Australia have got them at the moment. I think they're about to implement them. Along with no vaccine, no pay um, legislation. Basically taking away every single part of human rights. 
if anyone's seen my uh, my last uh, video that I did my last upload I showed you that UN paper where they freely admitted that they were breaking their own human rights laws them and the WHO by enforcing mandatory vaccines that they know that they know aren't tested I'll uh, it's this, basically this paper again It's a sorry state of affairs. Now it's now Canada's come out and said it. Basically, we're also going on about a possible wave three um, and a, an interbreeding of COVID of uh, COVID nineteen with uh, COVID twenty one. It makes you think. I think. Uh, Someone really is making all this up as you go along. How can you predict this? Hmm? Well, it just so happens you're going off computer models again. Seems like they never learn, eh? Which brings me to the good news. There's a guy called Mike Mike Devlin. Um, he's actually set up a court case. It starts this. Finding out about this story started off with a link that I got, got from one of my subscribers called Mick Edwards. Mick, you're a fucking diamond, mate. Honest to God, this story is brilliant. Anyway, there we go, like I was saying. But seriously, Mick, you're a good one. But uh, essentially, he's taking the, uh, the entire British Parliament's court. Um, he already has a, a very well respected human rights lawyer involved. Um, 
several governmental lawyers, um, a couple of MPs as well. But it's basically bringing them all up on their, well, charges like genocide, fraud, medical fraud, scientific fraud, um, coercion, coercion by fraudulent means, uh, which is con, con, conning basically. Um, so this goes on and on and on and on. Murder, murder of uh, OAPs. Um, like I said, this guy is an incredible case. He does already apparently. Um, his legal team have already turned around and like I said, these people know what they're talking about. And they said, this will get heard because it runs off civil law. Now why? Why is this important to people who don't live in Britain? Well, if you live in the, any of the Commonwealth countries, New Zealand, perhaps, Australia, perhaps, Canada, even the US, you can actually take these people to court under civil law um, rules. Which essentially means you can set up this case as well in your country. It's the kind of case that's comparable to, to Nuremberg in the importance and scale of what is going ahead. It is the entire parliament. Remember when I said we needed to uh, erase parliament and start again, start from scratch? I believe this is how we're going to do it. But now you notice the, uh, the government scrabbling to get everything in place even even quicker than they have been and like i was saying to one of the uh the canadian lads the other night the quicker they go the more mistakes they make the more mistakes they make the more people think they find out and the worse it becomes for them uh, they're playing their hands too fast and they get a sneaky suspicion they don't realise that they're painting their hands, playing their hands too fast. Or maybe they do. This is why more and more people are discovering what they're doing. And they're essentially not falling for this shit. Because, like I said, you see what they're doing. These protests in London are going to get bigger. The one in Hull is probably going to be massive. People are pissed, really pissed, especially the Welsh at the moment. Oh. We're doing it for you guys as well, lads. All right, and gas glasses. Sorry, can't be, uh, can't be sexist, can we? <laughs> anyway, like I said, this is a good, a good thing, a good move, you know in our direction it really does help the cause because the evidence is clear it's all documented this is the one thing these arrogant pricks fucking do that is essentially their Achilles heel they document and record everything thinking if they do that no one will notice and for other reasons I'm not going to get into here but I think some of you know what I'm getting at there's a reason for everything in this case I believe will be their downfall so everyone I repeat everyone needs to get behind these guys and show them as much support as you can donate if you can spread the word more than anything the more this gets public the more they'll have to address it and that'll bring them down further because everything will get, to get exposed then but just like everything else I'll leave a link in the description please go and watch the video the full video it'll really inspire hope anyway like, share, subscribe you know the drill in 84 
there were certain other members of certain members of the legal professions who came out and started saying similar things. Then the mathematician Andrew Mather, um, who, who has done an exemplary an exemplary job from the beginning um, in putting together the data which proves beyond any doubt whatsoever that at the very least every single MP who voted for the Coronavirus Act 2020 committed fraud by false representation on the basis that they knowingly relied upon false data or if they didn't know that it was false, then they did it in gross neg. They passed the bill in gross negligence, which is tantamount to fraud, and therefore that meant there was a case of fraud to argue against every single MP who voted for that bill. Now I, I, I'm sure that your, your listeners already have a very good idea of uh, of why. I'm saying that the data was false, but for those of you who don't, in a nutshell, they 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 were claiming from the very beginning that there was no other possible solution to the problem, regardless of whether or not you believe there is a virus or not. That's a separate issue. The data that they relied upon, A, the, the model that was put forward by Imperial College has been proven to be not just false, but overblown to the point of stupidity. But it's deliberate stupidity, quite obviously, because it's been used and it's still to a certain degree is being used and relied upon by Parliament to continue to impose what the coronavirus bill purported to make legal. Yeah. But what we're saying and it's not just me, as I say, we, we've had, uh, since we gave notice that we were putting together a private criminal prosecution against every MP, having seen how rigged the, the justice system has been over the last decade to prevent justice being done over fraudulent mortgages, and there are many, many thousands of people who can testify to that, uh, having seen how, how dodgy the judges can be and how complicit the legal professions can be, both barristers and solicitors. It is extremely encouraging and refreshing to say that, that right from the bottom of the profession to the top, including QCs, clerks at very high profile chambers have contacted myself and the other guy who is running the prosecution with me, um, who is putting himself forward as the complainant and he is uh, remaining anonymous at the moment for obvious reasons because he would just be attacked by 77 Brigade and the like. So basically, we have been told by a, a, a clerk from one of those chambers with five QCs within it, or actually it might be four, but they've written to us telling us that they believe that this is the most significant private criminal prosecution that, it, that has ever been laid. And the legal, uh, or rather the, the, the barrister who has agreed in principle to take the case, again, I'll keep, I'll keep that name um, anonymous for now, but she's part of one of four companies that specialize in private criminal prosecutions for fraud. And what she, in, in her words, the allegations that we've drafted and that we've served on every single serving MP prior to the most recent vote on whether or not they were going to extend the CV bill. We put them all on notice that if they didn't set in motion an action that would result in the annulment of this treacherous treasonous act, then they would all be held liable for breaches of the Fraud Act 2006 False by, fraud by false representation and also breaches of the Treason Felony Act 1348 uh, because they've committed treason against the people and against the monarch. Um, and in addition to that, they have also committed genocide because their own ONS data shows that in the initial period of the lockdown, according to their own data, the mortality rate, the, fi the five year mortality rate doubled in the initial period of the lockdown.